Hello, uh, my name is Carlos Gonzalez Ballestero. I am a senior postdoc at the University of Innsbruck in the group of Professor Oriol Romero Isart. And uh, today I want to talk to you about a theory project that we have been developing in the last year and that we are still working on that we call spin steered magnetics and whose preliminary results you can check in this archive. <clears throat> As a matter of introduction, uh, the physics we study uh, for spin waves in this uh, work are very related to a well-known phenomenon with electromagnetic waves. And this is the phenomenon by which light or in general electromagnetic wave can be uh, steered or uh, its propagation can be modified by coupling some of this electromagnetic wave to an ensemble, a large ensemble of dipole emitters. Okay. Um, this ensemble of dipole emitters, each of them couples to the electromagnetic uh, radiation via electric dipole interaction. And as a collective ensemble, they, exert, they can exert large modifications uh, to how light propagates, okay? And maybe two uh, famous examples of this, especially in the community of uh, atom optics, which uh, is our original community where we come from, is the phenomenon of slow light, where, sl where light can be uh, decelerated um, significantly, and the phenomenon of backward waves for light, where the group velocity and the phase velocity of light take opposite signs. So in this work, what we want to do, or we have uh, proposed theoretically, is to steer spin waves to apply this similar procedure um, uh, to spin waves using uh, solid state paramagnetic spins as distance uh, dipole emitters, and in particular, uh, um, um, empty centers, although our theory applies to many other parametric spins. Um, and the reason we want to, first of all, the reason we want to use empty centers is because they are very highly controllable, okay? They can be um, um, controlled in the microwave domain, and they can also be optically pumped. They can be initialized in their ground state by optical, external optical pumping. Uh, they also couple to spin waves, the magnetic dipole interactions. Uh, so basically, the, the, the ground state manifold of MV centers is a three level system whose transitions have a magnetic, di magnetic dipole moment that couples to spin wave magnetic fields. And finally, these ensembles of MV centers have already been used for detection of spin waves. Maybe you are familiar with this work by the group of, of Tuno van der Sar, which is also a co author of this work, um, uh, where they have a, a, a thin film. Uh, a thin geek film, and on top of which they place a microwave antenna to excite spin waves, such as this blue, uh, blue wave here. And these spin waves enter a region uh, uh, where the slab uh, is covered by another slab of diamond. And then by studying the fluorescence of these and the centers in, in this diamond, it is possible to map, to create an image of uh, the uh, magnetic field of the spin wave. And in particular, this is the image I show here, that all these fringes correspond to basically the oscillations of the spin wave. So because these emitters have been demonstrated to couple to magnons and to be able to <clears throat> detect magnons, we wonder if we can go one step further and use them to modify magnet propagation as a tool in particular, one of the applications as a tool to devise flexible information processing platforms for spin waves, where we can uh, have a, an extra external you know, lever to tune the propagation of spin waves across uh, uh, computing devices. So let me just very briefly summarize for you the theory, uh, which uh, I don't have a lot of time to get into the details, but I uh, encourage you to go to our uh, recent archive where everything is uh, proven and uh, derived in detail. So uh, what we basically can see is a system like this. We have a thin film configuration. This would be YIG, and there is an applied magnetic field uh, in the parallel direction, uh, parallel to the plane. Uh, on top of this jig film, we place a diamond slab, which contains an uh, ensemble of N and V centers placed random positions and very simple uh, configuration. Uh, we assume they are aligned parallel to B0, although this is not uh, critical for the results of our theory. We assume the NV centers can be also optically pumped or not. We were going to calculate uh, our results both in the absence and in the presence of optical pumping to see what optical pumping can, uh, can do. Um, we also, for simplicity in this talk, I'm going to focus on the fundamental spin wave band of this structure, which means that the spin waves are only going to be labeled by a wave vector K, but these results apply in general to, to every band. So these are the steps we follow. Again, this is just a brief enumeration. I urge you to go here to see more details. The steps are, the, the first one is, uh, we calculate the spin wave eigenmodes of this uh, slab. We quantize uh, this theory, and the reason we quantize and we use a quantum formalism is, is just basically because uh, we are interested on 
having a formalism as general as possible so that it can be applied both to classical string wave computing and hopefully in the future to quantum states of string waves, such as, for instance, uh, single magnet states. Uh, we then write the Hamiltonian of the ensemble of MV centers, which, as I told you before, are three level systems. But to all intents and purposes, it turns out that for the regimes uh, of operation we are interested in, but the typical values of B0, only one uh, uh, transition of this three level system can be isolated. So basically, uh, you can assume uh, within a very good approximation that these MV centers are actually two level systems interacting with near spin waves. Um, we can also write an interaction Hamiltonian for these uh, two components, which uh, is mediated by a magnetic dipole interaction. Uh, we then uh, include in our theory uh, all the dissipative processes in the system. First of all, the dissipation of the spin waves via uh, Gilbert dumping. Second, dissipation and the phasing of these solid state quantum emitters. And we also include as a dissipative term uh, the possibility of optical pumping of these emitters, which uh, is a process, as I told you before, by which these uh, two level systems are forced optically to go into their uh, quantum ground state. Uh, and as a last step, now we have a global dynamical equation for this whole system, which includes the spin waves and the MV centers. Now what we can do is we trace out the degrees of freedom of the MV centers using uh, uh, very well-known techniques in quantum open quantum systems, which are called projection operator techniques. And what this allows us to do is to get an effective dynamical equation only for the spin waves, where the effect of this ensemble of MV centers is just uh, um, um, appears as an effective, uh, coherent, and dissipative uh, terms. And this is what I mean. So uh, we can write an equation that looks like this. This is like a von Neumann equation for the spin waves. We have a derivative of the spin wave density matrix is equal to uh, this commutator. This is the coherent evolution, which contains a Hamiltonian of the spin waves, and the dissipator of the spin waves, which contains Gilbert damping. But both the Hamiltonian and the dissipator also contain extra terms which come from the effective uh, uh, back action of this ensemble of MV centers, okay? I'm not going to get into details, but uh, it can be shown that for this very particular, very simple configuration of MV centers, uh, these modifications that the spin waves experience due to the, in, to the ensemble of dipoles are basically a shift in the natural frequency of each eigenmode of the spin wave. So every spin wave eigenmode with frequency omega k experiences a shift delta k of frequency. And the line with gamma of every uh, spin wave, which is the inverse of the lifetime, experiences also a, a shift or a change, if you want, by capital gamma k. Okay, uh, so let me focus on this gamma k to show you a bit how it looks like and uh, the relevant dependencies for this line with uh, shift of the spin wave uh, uh, mode with, with vector k has three important dependencies. The first one is the density of MV centers in this ensemble. The second one is a Lorentzian resonance condition, okay, which tells you that the spin waves that will be affected more by this ensemble of two-level systems are the spin waves which are resonant to these two-level systems, and this is what this resonance condition is telling you. And then you have an occupation um, uh, factor, which is basically the difference between the occupation of the excited state of these two-level systems and the ground state of these two-level systems in the steady state. Now, what we find very suggestive about this and what is not uh, as uh, straightforward in the case of slow light is the fact that we can tune many of these parameters and we can therefore tune this shift in the line width and this frequency shift of the spin waves. And in particular, we can uh, uh, tune uh, the density of emitter of MV centers in fabrication process. We can also move this resonance condition with the magnetic field B0, which means we can select which spin waves interact with, uh, with uh, MV centers more. And we can also tune this population inversion via optical pump. So let me show you what we can do by looking at the propagation, some propagation features of merit. And in particular, I'm going to uh, show you uh, three properties of the spin waves. One would be the spin wave spectrum, that is the dispersion relation. The second would be the group velocity, and the third would be the propagation length. So here I'm showing you the dispersion relation of the spin waves, okay, propagating along uh, a perpendicular to the field. So this is the Damon Eschbach kind of spin waves. This omega in gigahertz versus wave vector in units of the thickness of the film, okay? And notice I'm showing a very narrow region of wave vectors, and this is because um, only the spin waves within a very narrow frequency range close to resonance with the two-level systems will uh, suffer on uh, uh, 
appreciable uh, modification. So I'm, I'm focusing on this region already, and I'm using these parameters, 5 meters per cubic micron, room temperature, and applied magnetic field of 10 milliteslas, and I'm applying optical pumping to this MV center. So you can assume these MV centers are in their ground state. Okay, so what I, what I show here is the, dash, the black dashed line corresponds to how would the dispersion relation look like in the absence of this uh, slab of MV centers, whereas the red line corresponds to the, to the real dispersion relation once we have traced out and incorporated the back action of this ensemble of monitors. Okay. So what you can see is that uh, there is a significant modification. It's not very strong in absolute value. So you, you go from 2.6 to 2.7. So it's a small percentage, like 5%. However, I want you to notice how sharply the derivative of this curve, the slope of this curve can change, which means that in principle, we can expect group velocities to change a lot. So let me prove, let me show now the group velocity here. So what I'm showing here is the group velocity in absolute value, and I put it in absolute value because it can be negative in the same range of wave vectors. So solid lines, whenever there is a solid line, means the group velocity is positive, and when there is a dashed line, means the group velocity is negative. Okay, so I want to draw your attention to three points of this graph. The first one is this big maximum here, which represents a thousandfold velocity enhancement with respect to the absence of MV centers. So the MV centers here are increasing the propagation velocity of spin waves by a factor of 1,000. Then we have this dashed line which corresponds to negative group velocity, even though the wave vector is positive, and this means we have a backward wave propagation for spin waves uh, for Damon H back modes. Uh, and I also want to point out this uh, point where positive becomes negative, means that the group velocity becomes zero, and we have completely suppressed the propagation of the spin waves with um, uh, the MV centers. Okay, so what this means is that MV, uh, sorry, spin waves with this particular energy will be accelerated, spin waves with this particular energy will be uh, completely stopped. Okay, um, so if we now look at the propagation length uh, here, same propagation length in millimeters in the same range of wave vectors, we can see still the same phenomenon. We see a, a, a point, two points of zero propagation length, which means we have stopped the propagation of spin waves. We al actually also see an enhancement in propagation length, in this case of 50%, because even though the spin wave propagate much faster, they also became much faster, but still you can get an improvement of 50%. So, what we conclude from this and what we are very hopeful about is that even with a very, very simple spin bath, which is just a, a, a bath of MV centers in the ground state, randomly oriented um, and homogeneously optically pumped, we can modify the spin wave propagation in multiple ways, okay? But this is not all, everything, there is something more. And in particular, this is very highly flexible, okay? In particular, we can move the magnetic field around, we can play with, with the static applied magnetic field and, and move this whole energy range to the right or to the left, which means we can basically, through the magnetic field B0, choose which spin waves are modified. So it's not only that we can accelerate this spin wave, we can choose which spin waves we accelerate or uh, stop. Um, and furthermore, we can also turn on and off this modification. So if you now uh, turn optical pumping off and let the uh, MV centers relax to their uh, thermal state, then these curves will be, will relax basically to their uh, um, uh, this, their counterpart in the absence of MV centers because by uh, uh, turning off the optical pumping, we are in some sense deactivating this interaction with the MV center. So which means we can select which spin waves interact and we can turn the interaction on and off. So we have a lot of flexibility. So this is my conclusions. Uh, as I told you, externally controlled solid state spin ensembles can enable to modify the spin wave propagation in multiple ways. In particular, I have shown you we can fully suppress and enhance the propagation length with current experimental parameters. Uh, I have shown you that this is frequency selective through the DC field, which means I can choose again which spin wave mode I want to modify. And I can choose to turn on and off even dynamically the, uh, the modification of the spin wave propagation properties. And it is our hope, and this is what we are working on right now, that th this concept of spin steered magnetics will enable flexible magnetic devices. Okay, and, and our motivation for this is that only, as I told you before, the simplest configuration has been explored. Uh, but we can uh, explore many other directions. We can explore time dependent uh, paths. We can drive these MV centers uh, uh, with a microwave field, and then they will become a time dependent uh, bath. And we have been starting to uh, explore this uh, from the very uh, fundamental theory side in this PRA, if you are interested. We can also play with the optical pumping and spatially pattern the optical pumping to create uh, um, uh, only regions with a de defined geometry where the MV centers are uh, uh, in the ground state and regions where they are not. And this will allow us in principle to generate diffraction ratings and mirrors and splitters as uh, 
is routinely done in nanophotonics via material engineering. We can also study memory effects and many more. Okay, so this is our vision. We uh, we hope to uh, achieve uh, 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 enough flexibility to propose a new generation of devices where you can steer, completely modify how spin waves propagate and also uh, uh, exploiting or linearities, perform operations on them uh, using uh, external control of this parameter spin sample. And with this, I will thank you for your attention.